Hi, good day. It's Ms. Darcel of Faith and Works Private Tutoring, and welcome to our 2021 Math Specimen SEA paper correction. Now we are doing section one, questions one to 20. So I'm going to show the working, right, and the answers. Even though in this section, working is not necessary, however, for the student's benefit, they need to know how to work the question to get to the answer. So let's dive right in. So I'm going to share the screen. And let's go. So we have number one. Write the numeral to represent 300 and 5,048. All right. Okay, so here's what we need to do. We're gonna break it out into place value. So we have ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, and hundred thousands. All right, so the easiest way is to start from the ones column and move to the left. So we have 48. All right, so let's start from here. So we have 48. 48 straightforward. 48, that's easy. Now we have 5,000. Okay, so let's build that in here. So that's gonna come 5,000, all right? Then we have 300 and 5,000. So we know that is in the 300, in thousands, right? So how many hundred thousands? Three hundred thousands. So that's six zero, right? And we kind of just add them to get the place value. So we have eight, four, zero, five, zero, three. 305,000. So this is a group here. And this is a group here. So you're looking at what is called the thousands. All right, so 305,000 is a group. Then you'd see and, and maybe if it was 448, you'll know four goes in the hundreds. Four goes in the tens, eight was anyone's. All right, so our final answer, 305048. All right, so let's not clear all. Let's go to the next. We're going to keep the place value here to help us with the second question. So state the place value of the digit three in the numeral 605, 653,581. So let's look at that. So we're filling it in. We start from the ones column and move to the left. So that's one goes here, eight goes here, five, three, five, six. All right, see the place value of the digit three. Ah, he's over here. This is 1,000. So the place value of the digit 3 is thousands. That's where he is in the place value chart. All right, next. And we're moving along. Yeah. All right. Now, round 6,498 to the nearest thousand. 
All right, again, place value. So we have ones, tens, hundreds, thousands in this case, right? So we're gonna place it in place value. We start from the zero, go to, from the ones we go to the left. So we have eight, nine, four, and six. Now, when we have to round off, the key is round to the nearest thousand. So we're looking for the number in the thousands, which is here. All right, then we look to the number directly to the right of it. If this number is five or more than five, all right, we will add one. So five and more than five, add one. If it's less than five, stays the same. Right? So in this case, oh, and everything changes into zero. Change the rest of numbers. numbers into zeros, All right? So let's follow our own steps. So this is, whoop, it, stay, it goes here, it's less than five, so it stays the same, All right? This number stays the same, that's in the box, and all these other numbers turn to zero. So our final answer is going to be, Six thousand. Right? Six thousand. All right, next one. Ah, who scored the highest? The scores in a video game are given for four players. Who scored the highest? Now, what some students might mistakenly do, they look they think, okay, we're on the place value trend. So they might think, okay, in one's column, yeah, we have eight, we have seven, nine, we have six. Aha, this is the lowest. So he's out. All right, the highest number is this, nine. So the answer is three. But that's not how we do it in this case. All right, what we have to do is we have to look at the numbers from the front. So we're doing place value again. So we have ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, I don't even know space, tens of thousands. All right, oh, we're gonna put that here. Hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands. All right. So we, on this case, when we're looking for who has the highest score, we're gonna look from the right to the left. So we have all of them start with four. Okay, so we can't decide wh what to do with that. Now we look at the number in the thousands. We have six, nine, eight, and nine. Oh, we're looking for the highest. Okay, that's out, bye. So nine, ooh, eight, eight's out. So we have nine and nine. Now we're going to the next place value column, hundreds. Who has more? Oh, eight is more than six, uh, he's the winner. All right, so who scored the highest? Vidal. Great, everyone's going good so far. We're clear enough. All right, so these are the easy ones. We're building up, we're building up here. All right, next one. The items below on display are at Sarah's electronic store. What fraction of the items are phones? Ah, yes. Let's zoom out a little bit. All right. Keyword clues and worded problems. Look at what the question says. What fraction 
of the items are four. So that means that the answer has to be in fraction form. All right, so don't say you count the phones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, eight phones. That's not the answer. It says fraction. So what is a fraction? A fraction is a part and a whole, All right? Part of a whole. So you have a part as a numerator, then you have the whole as the denominator. So what is the whole here? The whole is the total. So total number of items. You have eight forms, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We have 14 total items. The number of forms, eight, All right? Of course, we must always reduce to the simplest terms. Okay, so let's use two. Whatever we do to the bottom, we do to the top. So two into 14, seven, two into eight, four. So our final answer, four over seven. Okay, great. Let's go on, on to the next one, on to the next one, ah, yes. One fifth of Gail's allowance is $30. Calculate Gail's allowance. Aha, uh -huh, you say, okay, one fifth, yeah, man. One fifth, 30, yeah, man. Six dollars, woo, got it. Wrong. Now, this is a word, now with worded problems, you can translate them into numbers and symbols, right? So Galen start with six dollars, right? One fifth of her allowance, which is what we don't know, is thirty dollars. Now, if you were to check back, one fifth of six dollars would not give you thirty dollars. It'll give you six over five, right? So let's rewrite this as a mathematical sentence. One fifth, so that's a fraction of, of is also, could also be translated as multiplication. Okay, is allowance. We don't know what that is. So let's put um, A for allowance. Is, that means equal $30. So now we have rewritten that sentence as a equation. All right, we have translated from words into figures and symbols. So now it's kind of easier to see. Okay, so we need to find out what A is. When you have part and you want to find the whole, the easiest thing to do, we're going to flip the fraction. 5 over 1 times 30 over 1, 5 by 30, $150. All right, if you're not sure, we can double check. So one fifth of my 150 over one. So let's see if we're gonna get back $30. Five into five, one, five into 15 is three, five into zero is zero, voila, $30, we got it back. All right, so always double check your answers. That's very important, always double check. All right, let's move on to the next one. Ooh, that's a good one. So please, the numbers we learn in the correct positions on the number line. All right. So, all right, so we have zero to one. Okay, so zero to one. Numbers less than one. So even if we have our place value, let's say tens, ones, decimal point, tens, hundreds, right? Hundreds. We line them up again. We have zero. Oh, let's write them how we see it. All right? We have 1.25. 1.70, 0, 0. 
All right. What is what? So let's look. So like anyone before, we're gonna this time we're gonna start. If you're looking for order, we're gonna start from the left side and we move it to the right. So we start in one's position, which is the smallest number. In this case, the one that starts with zero, right? So zero to one, because as you can see, the numbers are increasing. Zero, one, two. So this 0 0.95. Pretend that's a nine, All right? So we eliminated that. Now they both have one in one's position. So let's look at the tens position. So which is smaller? The two, All right? So we have 0.25 and then of course, 0 0.7 is less. So zero, one point, not 0 0 0.7, 1.70 is closer to the two. All right, then 1.25. Let's think of it as if you had dollars and cents. $1.25 is less than $1.70. And 95 cents is less than both of them. All right. All right, next one. Ooh, express the shaded area as a decimal, which represents part of the whole. Again, we're looking at part of a whole, but keyword clues. Exp express the shaded area as a decimal, right? So we have to do some conversion. We could start as a fraction and then we're gonna change it into a decimal. So we have our part over, out of the whole. So let's count up what the total number of blocks are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight blocks. And let's count how many are shaded? One, two, three, four. Four are shaded. Again, we reduce to the lowest unless you know your completion chart by heart. It helps to memorize it, All right? Four into eight is two. Four into four is one. All right, okay, we have a fraction. How do we change it? Now, if you memorize your conversion chart with fractions, decimals and percentages, automatically you should know what this is. If not, let's do it the long way. All right, this is how you change a fraction into a decimal. You put your decimal point, of course, because two into zero can. Two into one is zero. So we have to add on a zero. Two into 10 is five, no remainder. Five twos are 10. We don't put a point. All right, zero, no remainder, perfect. Answer, 0 0.5. And there you have it. Make sure read what the question asks because if the question said, put it as a fraction, you wouldn't put 0 0.5. So you have to be very careful. All right, let's go to the next one. All right, we have number nine. Natalie has seven bills in her pocket with a total of $48. Write the missing values of the two bills above. So let's calculate how much money she has now. So she has 20 plus five, that's 25, 26, 27, 28. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna subtract 48 minus 28. Eight minus eight is zero, four minus two is two. So we have $20. How many bills do we have? Two bills. So we're gonna divide this amount by two. Two into two, one, and into 10. All right, so we have a $10 bill here and a $10 bill here. Two $10 bills. All right, let's go on to the next one. We have, oh yes. Miss Tang bought four sets of donuts. She created a package of th treats using two thirds of a set. How many packages did she create using all sets? Four sets. All right, now we have four sets. One, two, three, and four. All right, so this is one set. 
how many donuts are in one set? One set equals how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine donuts. All right, she created a package using two thirds of a set. So two thirds would be two thirds multiply nine would give us three into three, one, three into nine, three, three, but blah, blah, two, six donuts. Ah, so two thirds set contains six donuts. So let's block out the sets. All right, so this is one set here, that's six donuts. One set here, six donuts. One set here, another six. One set here, another six. All right, so we have four packages so far. All right, but we have a remainder in each box. So we're gonna take some of each, one set from each set, all right? And we're gonna create, we're not gonna throw out our extra three donuts, right? We're gonna use them and create another set. So we have three from here, three from here. Then we have three from this one and three from this one. Voila. So let's count how many we have. All right, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six packages. Yippee, got that. Excellent work. All right, let's go to the next one. Okay, ooh, conversion again. So Betty weighs, Betty's weight is 46,000 grams. What is her weight in kilograms? Mm, so this pulls on several different skills. First, you need to know how many grams are in a kilogram. One kilogram is 1,000 grams. You also need to know how to divide or multiply by 1,000, right? So we have one kilogram equals 1,000 grams, right? So 46 grams. All right, for 46,000 grams, how much kilograms is that gonna be? So we have to divide by a thousand. When you divide it by a thousand, you have to move the decimal point three spaces to the left because you're going from a smaller quantity to a larger quantity. So at the end, of every whole number, there's a decimal point. So you're coming here. One, two, three. So you're stopping here. So your decimal point here. So 46 kilograms. You don't have to put point zero, zero, zero. Zeros after the decimal point is understood, right? So simply 46 kilograms is just fine. Yay! All right, next one. All right, Ethan started an online math class at the time shown on the clock. The class lasted 45 minutes. What time did math class end? All right, this is straightforward. We counted in fives. All right, we count in five. So let's count. So this is the minute hand. So we count in 45 minutes. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. So your minute hand is gonna end at 11. So your hour hand, 10, but your minute hand ends at 
11, which is 55 minutes. All right, so you need to know what the numbers on the clock mean. Numbers on the clock mean hours and they also mean minutes. So it depends on which hand is on which number. The minute hand is on the number, that means that's minutes. If the hour hand, which is the shorter hand, is on a number, we are count we're looking at the hour. All right, so don't mix it up. Next one. Ah, yes. Convert two and a half hours to minutes. Okay, let's do this. All right, so again, we're doing some conversion. So one hour, how much minutes does that contain? 60, right. 60 minutes. So two hours will contain 60 multiplied by two, which is 120 minutes. Now it says one fifth. What is one fifth of an hour? I don't see one fifth on a clock. So here's what we have to do. There are 60 minutes in an hour. All right, 60 minutes on a clock. So let's calculate one fifth of 60 minutes. What is that going to give us? Five into five, one, five into 60, 12. So that is going to give us 12 minutes. So we add them together. 120 plus 12 will give us 132 minutes. Good job. All right, we're on a roll, we're on a roll. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ah, yes. So the model below is for my stacking one centimeter cubes. Calculate the volume of a model. All right, so formulas. Let's see if you remember our formulas. So the volume of a cube, that formula is side by side by side, all right? So this side, this cube is one centimeter. So that's one by one by one. So each block is volume is one centimeter cubed, all right? We have that. So all we have to do now is count the number of blocks. No, it might look like an optical illusion, but take it, we're taking our time. All right, let's look at what's on the top. Let's count here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, five blocks on the top. Now, if you look here and here, you would realize that each of these five blocks is standing on top of a block. So obviously, five so underneath each of the five blocks is a block block underneath them so that's five by two that's ten blocks and then we have this one here all right so ten plus one eleven cubic centimeters good job all right let's keep going We're almost there mm-hmm Ah, yes. So the second hand on the clock turned two right angles. What number did the second hand turn? Second hand point to after the turn. All right. So we need to know how many minutes are represented by a 90 degrees. Now we have our clock here. Now, this clock has 12 strokes on it, right? 12, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. A circle, how much degrees are there in a circle? Correct, 360 degrees. So to find out how much each from here to here, right? From here to here, from here to here, from each hour represents, we could, it looks like a flower. 360 divided by 12. 
12 into 12, 1, 12 into 36, 3, 30 degrees, right? So each hour, basic hour, represents 30 degrees. So from 12 to 1, that's 30 degrees. 30, so on, all the way, all the way. All right, all the way around the clock. So, two right angles. A right angle, 90 degrees. Two right angles, 90 multiplied by 2 is 180 degrees. All right. So, let's count. We're here. So, this is, if we're not sure, Again, we can break it down. How many hour hands or hours will that be? So 180 divided by 30, all right? 30 into 31, 30 into 180 is six. So we have to move our hands six. So let's look at that, all right? Six times. We have well, six spaces. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Bingo. All right. Or we could have counted 180 degrees. 30 plus 30 plus 30 plus 30 plus 30 plus 30. 180 degrees. Bingo. Five. It lands on five. Excellent work. Excellent work. Let's keep going. We're almost there. All right, which quadrilateral has no right angles? All right, so we're picking back thing off what we just did. So sometimes, see why it's important to have foundation because we just did something with right angles. You need to know what right angles look like. You need to know how many degrees right angles have. So sometimes the questions pick it back off of each other. All right, which quadrilateral has no right angles? So two perpendicular lines meeting at a point. This has a right angle. The, nope. All right, this is a right angle here. This is a right angle. This is a right angle. So the only one that doesn't have a right angle, B. Right? That's the only one that doesn't have a right angle. All right, we're coming to the end, y'all. All right, name a solid that has five faces, one of which is a square. All right, I'm not a drawer, so I'm not going to try it. But it's a square base pyramid. <laughs> ah, it's a square base pyramid. Oh, my. All right, so let me see if I can show you what I mean. So this is a so the square, the base, as one. Oh, boy as one, All right? I'll have to use different colors. This is one, I'll have to use colors. This is one side as well, All right? This is, this is another side. And this is another side. So that's one, two, three, four. Oh, this wasn't one, sorry. One, two, three, four, five. All right, this little dot here is not part of it. Right. So we have one side, this side in the back, that's two. This one on the side, that's three. This one in the front, that's four. And the base is five. All right, so a square based pyramid. If you're not sure, check your shapes and polygons. All right, that section in your textbook, go through that, shapes and polygons. All right, let's go down. All right, so the table below shows the number of books read by five students in a reading competition. 
Complete the table below to show how many books Basha read if then 73 were read all together. All right, keyword clues here. How many books Basha read? 73 were read all together. So the total all right, is 73. Now we're looking for Basha. She has nothing. Right, she's empty. So what we have to do, we are going to have to add all of these. And since we have to find out what's missing, that is a clue to subtract. So let's do that now. So what we have to do, add 15 plus 17 plus 18 plus 12. All right, and that's gonna give us a grand total of 57. All right, but to find the missing number of books, we're gonna to have to subtract that. 73 subtract 16, so, sorry, 57, is gonna give us 16. So Vasha read 16 books, nice. All right, guys, two more to go. Let's go. All right, note for the exam, you only have approximately 20 minutes to finish this section, All right? So the faster you can do this, the better. I'm just slowing it down so you can see what the working is, right? All right, what is the mode for the following set of scores? All right, so mode, what does this mean? Right, mode is the most common or frequent item or number or score, right? Whatever they're asking for. So we have a set of test scores. So it's going to be the most frequent number of test scores or amount. So certain things are catching my eye. 41 is catching my eye. So there's 141 here, two, three, four. Oh, 441. Hey, I might be done. Wait, I'm seeing more than 143. So let's look at 43. 143, two, three, four. Look at that. They are both, we both have the same number. So that means there are two modes in this set, 41 and 43, all right? Nothing is wrong with having two modes or more than one mode. So that's perfectly normal. So don't panic if you see two modes. All right, we had a little glitch in the matrix there, but we're back. Okay, and the last one, everybody. The bar graph shows the number of school items used by students. So on, they'll call it the y-axis, but we're not all in <laughs> primary school, all right? So the number of items is written on this left side, all right? And the number of uh, vertically, and then type of items is written horizontally, right? So the bar, so let's look at the question. The question says, how many more pencils are used than pens? How many more than, All right? That's a keyword clue again, subtraction. It's important to know your keyword clues, All right? You can check on my Facebook page or Instagram page at 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 sign faith and works tutoring and you will see the different types of keyword clues and what do they mean so certain words indicate certain operation so if you have to subtract add multiply or divide okay so check that out all right so pencils and pens how many pencils do we have in total the bar goes up to eight so we have eight pencils how many pens do we have? It goes up to two, we have two pencils. Therefore, how many more pencils than pens? 
8 minus 2, 6. Right? Or you can even count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You could do that as well. Right? So, excellent work, guys. So thank you for joining me. I'm Ms. Darcel of Faith and Works Private Tutoring. And if you have any math questions or even the ELA, it's on my page at Faith and Works Tutoring. All right, the answers are there for task one, two, and three. Any questions you need help with, free, be, feel free to put it on my page. I will answer as fast as I can. All right, so you all have a good day. Take care, bye.